So this is our flip normals lighting scene for Maya with V-Ray. And to get started, we simply import the, the model that we want to use. So just go to File, Import. And we'll have our Monster More Single OBJ here. Just load it in. And when it comes in, it's just going to be in the root of your outliner. And you can just, you know, transform it any way you want just to make it fit in the scene. And then after that, you want to move it into your uh, underneath character groups. There's a character mask group. And this mask group just makes it possible for you to render out a mask for the character itself, or the model or whatever you have, um, just to make it easier to do post work on it. So just move this into the character mask group. And by default, this is hidden on the master layer. So, but nothing really happens on the master layer. Um, we have all our 50 plus lights out here. So you don't never, you're actually never going to be on the master layer. Everything is sorted nicely out here in the, in the render layers. So let's go to render layer one. For example, you can see the creature is now in here and because it's underneath the character group, uh, it, it automatically has some rotation applied to it with like, there's some keyframe animation, just so you don't need to manually go and rotate if you wanted to render out a turntable or something like that. Just a really handy feature. Um, yeah, but let's just take one of these light scenes and just take you through how you would set it up. So everything is, I mean, it's basically already done. All you need to do now is apply a material. And there are two ways of doing this. The first way is if you go under display in your outliner and you uh, disable DAG objects only, you'll get a list here of all the materials that are in the scene. And we've made a bunch of different materials, not just the materials that are assigned uh, to the render render layers. Uh, there's 30 plus materials for, you know, you can make a variation of, of renders. So you have some, some gray ones, some black ones, some whatever you want to apply to it. So we have a bunch of SSS materials, and these just adds a little bit of, of flair to your render. So the way it's set up in here is that we find our render layer, which is number three, and then we find the corresponding um, material to that, and then we just apply it to the to the to the model. So let's just take this and we just drag and drop, and you see it's just applied instantly. This doesn't really work for something with multiple objects in it. Uh, the easiest way to do that there is to go into your hypershade and then you'll have an overview of the materials in there as well. This nice little list here is not active by default. By default, your layout will look something like this. And it's, it's a little hard to get an overview of what's actually going on. So if you just press the list icon and make the swatches extra large, then you get a nice list with the names and you know it's easier to sort of navigate around. Very helpful. Yeah, and you just click around to see, okay, I like something like that or something like that. A really cool feature inside of 2016 is that you can actually change the render from hardware to say something like V-Ray and then it'll actually show you, oh, okay, this is what my SSS material actually looks like when it's rendered. Um, we're not gonna use that for this, but it's, it's a really, really handy feature. We, uh, we also have, um, for each, each light setup, we also have like a couple of lights, three, four lights, and those are just the basis. This is, that's a starting point. You can modify those as you see fit. This is not the definite product. This is not a locked down smile scene. Feel free to modify this as much as you want to. Yeah, anything is customizable. So if you just go under the lights group, uh, you're gonna find all the lights for all the render layers in here. So let's check, yeah, we, we're rendering out three right now. So we just check out the, the backlight, you know, adjust it any way you want. Let's say, I oh, want this brighter, I want it darker. And yeah. it's just gonna, it's just as easy as that. So let's just do a quick test render of exactly what we have set up now. And let's say, okay, we want this guy there and render him. Perfect. All right, so this has been rendered. Right now it's rendering without uh, GI. This is just to, to speed up the rendering process, really. Um, but this is enabled by default when you get the scene. So if we just take a look at the render settings, let's just start from the beginning here. Uh, it's all standard V-Ray, so you just go in here, you change your resolution to, let's say, you know, you want um, something nicer than this. So you have twice the resolution of that. Um, You go under V-Ray, and this is really where, if you are, if you're gonna make any adjustments to the scene, like right now everything is set up with sort of a production preset. 
so low noise, but it still renders kind of quickly. But if you want to do more preview renders, uh, what I would recommend is that you go in and you lower your subdivs and your threshold to something like 1 and 3, 4 or something like that. And if that's still not fast enough for you, you can up the threshold to something higher than 0 0.01 and then it's going to render faster but there's going to be a lot more noise. And under yeah under GI, this was just what, what was disabled before, this is just to make it render faster. You can do that for your render as well, just to make, sometimes you want that to make it look, it, it gets a different feel whether or not it has GI on or not. And yeah, there's a standard render, rendering bucket changing the size of that. And then under render elements, we have AO and multimat. So the multimat is the one that's connected to this group over here. So anything you put in the group is going to be rendered out with a mat. And the AO just goes on top of the character. And if you want to shave up some render time, you can just disable the AO as well, as that does take some some time to compute. Yeah. So like if we take a look at um, our frame buffer here, you can see we have the, the multimat and the AO pass in here as well. Very nice. So, uh, in terms of the camera, we have a couple different cameras in here. These are just for convenience. They do pretty much the same thing. It's a close-up camera, a cropped camera, and then just the standard camera. Uh, this is just a difference in zoom levels. So, I mean, you can modify it. Like everything else in the scene, you can modify it any way you really want. Make it closer, rotate it around. It doesn't, doesn't really... It's not locked in any way. So, if we want something like sexy depth of field on our on our render, what we'll need to do is if you go under camera, you can just select camera, that's the one that's activated in the viewport, and you go under extra V-ray attributes. Down here you'll find the the F number, which is, is the aperture of the camera. This is the one we'll need to change in order to make it um, more blurry, have a shallower depth of field, and you also need to go down and enable depth of field. So the way this works right now, 5.6 is not something that'll produce a high like level of blur, but if you go further down, you know, you get more and more and more. And an easy way to do this is like whenever you change the F number, your your lights will look brighter in your render. So let's say we want more depth of field. So we set this to something like 2.8, which is half of 5.6. And the way we combat this is there's a direct link between the F number and the shutter speed. So if you have the F number, like I just did, then you multiply the shutter speed by 4. The shutter speed is 100 right now, so we just put it to 400. Then we'll have even more depth of field. So now it's going to be more depth of field, but it's going to look the same in brightness. Yeah. If you don't compensate by the shutter speed, it's going to look, it's going to look way too bright. And the last thing to remember when you're rendering out this is that you have to specify, well, you don't have to, but if you specify a focus, then you control where the focus is yeah. on screen. And if you've noticed, there's a tiny little group here called distance sphere. Under the distance sphere, this is just a way to measure uh, where something is in space. So right now, there's just a tiny sphere here. Let's just scale it up a little bit. Um, you probably want to um, apply it uh, at the selected object to the render layer so you can actually see it. It's just hidden because you never need to actually see it. Yeah. So right now there's a distance sphere in here but we don't actually know where it is in space. So if you go up to the menu and go under display and heads up display under object details, if you just press that over in the right hand corner here you'll have a distance from camera. And so let's say okay we'll position the sphere and we'll position it on his face. That's perfect. So the way this works is um, this just links to the camera and it tells us, okay, this object is, is 242 units away. So you just go into your camera again and then you just simply type in 242 in the focus distance and then this, is a, this will be where your camera focuses. So the last thing we're gonna cover are gonna be the bases. Um, let's just hide the distance sphere from his, from his face. So the basis group is underneath the character group. So this is this is included in there, so it also rotates around. Um, if you just, let's just unhide the bases. You can see we have five bases in here. Different kinds of bases for, you know, different needs, really. There's a pedestal with a tiny stick in it, which is really nice for some sculptures that you put on top. Yeah. Or if you want to present your, you know, your final model, then you could use something like this super sexy rectangular base. 
And there are a couple different base materials that we've made specifically for the bases, but you can use any of the materials that you really want. Um, it's really up to you. We recommend some kind of um, clay material or marble material for that. Yeah. It can look really, really nice. So with all that said, let's just uh, let's say, okay, we don't really feel like uh, base is, is great for him right now. <laughs> Um, we can go ahead and do like a final render of this. So let's take, uh, let's check out a, a new render scene. Let's take, let's take eleven, because um, I like this one. So we just have our character in here again, and just simply drag the material out. Now he he's nice and pink. So I think this fits his character really well. So funky. <laughs> so, ready for a party. So let's just adjust him a little bit in the viewport. Become a little more menacing, a little bigger. Okay, we want a really nice side profile of him. There we go. And everything is enabled like it should be. We've got GI on. Settings are, well, the settings are a little low. So let's just up these settings again. And now we're actually ready to render. So just hit render and sit back. So now everything's been rendered and like before, you know, the, the multimat and the AO is going to be here. So you can just export that. Everything right now has been set up linearly. So this is more production environment oriented. And um, so everything is a linear image here. So the way you just save this out would be you go under save current channel and then go down to save all the channels instead. And then you just select open EXR and you just save your file, uh, name it whatever you want and save it out. This saves out all the passes now and they're now ready to be um, pulled into Photoshop.